This review has been made possible by Toyota of Naperville. As you know, Toyota has tons of brand new Toyotas available for purchase, but did you know that they also have a remarkable selection of used cars? Head on over to toyotaofnaperville.com and look through hundreds of used cars for sale right now. All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2019 Genesis G70. Up front is a 3.3 liter twin turbocharged V6 and down below is an eight speed automatic transmission. Now I'm super excited to be driving this here Genesis for two main reasons. First of all, I've never driven a Genesis product before. I've driven the Hyundai Genesis before this, but in 2017, Hyundai started producing luxury cars under the name of Genesis. And so I haven't driven a true Genesis product quite yet. The second reason is whenever I see twin turbocharged V6 with launch control on my daily schedule, I know that it's going to be a good Day. Now, before we get on to the rest of the video, if you guys are interested in selling your car, please click the link in the description below. Cashforcars.com will buy your car with a salvage title, good title, running, non-running, whatever it is. Please go support the channel by clicking the link in the description below. You can get a fast and easy quote for free, and they will pick up your vehicle in less than 24 hours. Well, let's get back to that 3.3 liter twin turbocharged V6. I'll put the horsepower and torque up on the screen. It is the high 300s. And I love it. The torque is really what gets me in this car. It feels very, very solid. I'll show you guys a launch here in a second. But this is the Kia Stinger engine. If you get the Kia Stinger higher trim level, it actually comes with this same engine, 3.3 liter twin turbo. And I love it. It delivers very, very solid power. For a vehicle like this, it's pretty, pretty cool. All right, so launch control here in the Genesis G70. First of all, it has to be fully warmed up in order for you to enable it. That's a little safety feature and I love that. So we'll put it into sport mode. We will hold down the traction control button until it says traction and stability control disabled. Left foot brake, launch control ready. Ugh. Wow. Now it's not the most aggressive launch control in the absolute world. The Porsche GT3 RS or Lamborghini Huracan is gonna be more of a punch, but a vehicle with launch control is always good. And of course, it's something to wow your friends with and just have a little bit of fun on the side with. I absolutely love that. And as you guys saw, the acceleration, the power, the sound, I think it's all there. And we'll talk about that at the end of the video. If you look in the description, there's actually time codes, or if you're using the YouTube player, there are chapters down at the bottom. If you skip to final thoughts, I'll talk about why this car is so good. Paired to the 3.3 liter is that eight speed automatic transmission. Nothing really groundbreaking here. Again, it's a Kia Stinger transmission and it works works well, it's nice, I like it, it does the job. It's not a dual clutch, which I think is interesting because the new Kia Sorento comes with an eight speed dual clutch, but this is not a dual clutch. However, I don't miss it too much, and overall, I don't have any complaints. However, you can get a manual transmission Genesis G70, which I think is absolutely amazing. I'm so glad that Genesis is doing this, but it's only offered with the 2.0 liter turbo engine as opposed to the 3.3 liter twin turbo. So food for thought there, but if you'd like to get a Genesis G70 brand new, you can get it in manual and that's really, really cool. Last but not least, this Genesis is all wheel drive. However, you can actually get rear wheel drive if that's something you'd like to seek out. This is all wheel and with launch control, I absolutely love that. With the drivetrain out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have two physical gauges. On the left is my tachometer, and on the right is my speedometer, and then I get a nice screen in the middle. I'll flip through a couple pages on here. This is very Kia to me. I think it looks nice, it functions well, and that's all I can really ask for from gauges like this. On the steering wheel on the left, I have my volume control, skip track mode, and phone options, and on the right, I have my pages selector for that center screen in the gauges we just talked about, as well as my radar cruise options. Again, really, really like that. And the steering wheel not only has paddle shifters on the back, I like that, 
but the overall steering wheel looks very nice. Perforated leather on the sides, the nice Genesis winged logo, which I really, really like. And it makes you feel a little bit more exclusive, a little bit cooler than owning a Kia Stinger. And you look down and it just says Kia. That's not as fun as seeing Genesis. That I like, I like seeing that. To the left of me, I have gauge dimmer switches, lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, gas cap release, and trunk release. And then on the door, I have two different memory seat options, power windows, power locks, and power mirrors, as well as I get a couple speakers, which is very, very nice. The sound system in the Genesis is very, very good. The bass is deep and rich, and I love that, you know, driving down the highway, you're not gonna have any issues hearing and enjoying your music. Moving into the center, I do have a nice little touchscreen display, and I say it's little because I wish it were slightly larger. This feels very Kia Stinger to me, and you know, I'm buying something with the nicer name than Kia, I should get a nicer screen. It's not necessarily the case here. However, I do have some added features above the Kia Stinger, like I have a lot more in-depth climate control options in the center screen. I, of course, have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And then the backup camera, I like it. It's a pretty good, high-quality backup camera. And these lines on the side do adjust for your trajectory. So when you turn the steering wheel, they turn as well. And that's really all I look for with backup cameras. Down below the center's infotainment screen, we have the climate control vents as well as the engine start stop button on the left. And then I have a bunch of physical buttons for the center screen. I have my favorite, my map, radio, media, seek, track, things like that, pretty basic buttons. However, I like that it still has physical buttons. Then we have the climate control. Speaking of physical buttons, very symmetrical here. I have the three big knobs, auto, dual zone, of course, heated and cooled seats, which is very, very nice. I am pleasantly enjoying the heated seats today, as well as the heated steering wheel. All very, very nice features. Heated and cooled seats is very, very big to me because that's really a true luxury car. A lot of vehicles these days have heated seats. It's not really anything too special, but the ventilated cooled seats, now you know you're really in something special. Down below that, we have a little opening trap door that reveals a 12 volt outlet, aux in, USB in, and a wireless charging pad. I would have liked to have seen a USB-C charger. That's the direction that a lot of vehicles are moving. However, this is a 2019 and I can't bash it too hard, but if Genesis doesn't add that in the next coming years, then I'll start to worry. Then we have the shifter itself. The shifter is slightly peculiar to me, and the reason for that is because it's a traditional shifter. You click the button on the side, you move it forward and back to get in and out of gear, but park is its own button. I'm not quite sure why they did this, because normally auto manufacturers will make a push button transmission to remove that center gear shift, or they'll have a center gear shift so they don't have to engineer buttons. It's usually one or the other. This is a very weird mix when it comes to the shifter. And so for this reason alone, I think I'd want the manual. One issue I'm starting to find with this shifter, this is after I got done filming, is the amount of times that I've put it into reverse thinking that it's parked, just pushing it all the way forward. I assume it's in park and I go to adjust my camera equipment or whatever and take my foot off the brake and then I start rolling backwards. So I wish that they just would have put park up at the top of the shifter as opposed to it being its own button, but alas, they did not do that. However, down below that, I have my drive modes button. So I have a couple different drive modes I can select here in the G70. I have smart, eco, comfort, sport, and custom. Down below the drive mode button, I do have my parking sensors on and off, auto holding brake, and my traction control off. This is actually how you engage launch control as well. You hold down the traction control off button. And then the power parking brake, which has a nice wide handle. I can fit three fingers under it, and I like that in a car. It's a lot easier to hit, and a lot easier to use. To the right of the power parking brake, we have our cup holders, so you know we have to do a big friggin' bottle test. And I can fit the very bottom portion of the bottle into this cup holder, but once I take a corner, it flies right back out. So unfortunately, the Genesis G70 fails the big friggin' bottle test. Center console has another USB charger in it, which is nice, but nothing other than that. 
Now, the seats are very comfortable. I like the light tan leather. I like the perforated leather. Like I said, heated, cooled, power, memory for the driver. And overall, I have no complaints about it. I really like the feel of them. They have high bolsters on the sides. So they keep me in. It feels sporty, but not overly sporty like a Civic Type R seat or a Focus RS seat where it's just uncomfortable. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's do a backseat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2019 Genesis G70. And honestly, my seat is kind of far back for my driving position, sure. But honestly, the back seat space isn't amazing. My knees are getting crushed a little bit by the front seat. I can't freely move them. And for this price point, for a vehicle this size, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more leg room. However, that probably would have meant lengthening the chassis and then you have the G80 for that. So I'm not gonna complain too much. Down here, I do have a USB charger. I do get a center console with two cup holders. And other than that, that's pretty much it. Up above me, I do have a pretty nice size sunroof that I enjoy. However, it doesn't come back here to the back seats. One interesting thing about the back seats though is that actually on the side here, on the passenger seat, I have operations to move the seat forward. This is seen on a lot more Asian vehicles. And what it's for is if you're riding in the back here like a chauffeur vehicle or like an Uber and there's no one in the front seat, you can give me a bunch of extra legroom by just moving this seat out of the way. And so I can shove this, how far will it go? Almost all the way up to the dash and I can fold this seat forward. And now the back seat has so much leg room that it rivals that of Cadillac and larger sedans. So if you are gonna use this as like a chauffeur car, like Uber or something, you can move that seat up and the rear occupant can actually do that on their own, which is great. Now we'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space. All right, it's 10 degrees today, so bear with me here, but trunk pop like this obviously these are the floor mats and stuff but nice genesis badging here big floor mat i don't know if this comes up honestly not as big of a trunk as i would have thought and it's not very deep it's maybe you maybe have like a foot and a half of clearance here to slide something in so whatever you're loading in the back has to be low and flat other than that genesis first aid kit which is i guess nice to see oh it's velcro there you go. Stay there. But yeah, honestly kind of disappointed by this trunk. I thought that there would be more space. It, it seems like high up, if that makes sense. It's not that deep. It's not that deep, bro. Now we got to talk about the looks. I actually really, really like the look of the G70. I think it looks proper. I think it looks sporty, but I think it looks luxurious. I think it looks different enough than a Kia Stinger for sure. These are definitely two very different distinguishable vehicles. It doesn't look like a rebodied Stinger. However, one thing I don't like is the radar cruise sensor in the front grille. It's a little obvious where they put the radar sensor. And they tried to make it look like the rest of the grille, but uh, I can't really give them a pass on that one. Speaking of exteriors, if you are legally required to run a front plate on your vehicle in the state or country that you live in, but you think it's too ugly, then click the link in the description below and get yourself a con plate. The con plate holder is a suction cup holder for your license plate that goes on the inside of your windshield. This means you can remain legal when driving around, but for pictures, for shows, it's easily removable from the windshield, so the front of your car looks its best. Click the link in the description below, get your own con plate, and keep your car looking looking good. So let's get to my final thoughts about the Genesis G70. Well, first of all, I like it. And how can you not? It's a twin turbocharged V6. Plenty of power, fun to drive, has a great driving feel, especially for a luxury car. This doesn't feel bloated and lethargic. It feels spry, which is interesting from a luxury vehicle. But something I wanted to bring up when doing research for this vehicle was that I saw that Genesis was named the most reliable brand of 2020 by JD Power and Associates. And I know that this is really built out of Hyundai and Kia parts, and those are reliable companies as well. But for a no-name brand that's only started selling cars in 2017 to then 
three years later, really two years later, get the JD Power top pick award is pretty interesting. And at first I was like, how did they do this? I mean, they really pushed this brand. And after doing some research, I found out how. First of all, they started sponsoring golf events. My friend is an avid golfer and she went to a Genesis sponsored golf tournament. Genesis got the name out there with people who have the money. You don't see a Honda HRV being displayed at a golf tournament. You see BMWs, you see Mercedes, you see Alfa Romeos, and now you'll see Genesis. But the second reason and the more important reason why Genesis succeeded so quickly besides obviously having a very powerful parent company is the fact that Genesis gathered a nearly Avengers style team to get these cars made. Now, a lot of these names are pretty foreign, so I apologize if I butcher them. But starting off with, Genesis hired Luke Donkenvolk. He was the design director for Bentley, Lamborghini, and Audi. He is now the CCO of Genesis. Then there's Mark Del Rosso, former president of Audi in North America. He's now the CEO of Genesis. North America. Marcus Hene, former vice president of Mercedes, is now the CEO of Genesis in China. Sung Yup Lee, who helped design the Bentley Continental GT, helped Genesis with their designs. And Albert Bierman, former head of the BMW M car division, you know, the M2, M3, M5, he overlooks the performance division of Genesis. And there's other names that I'm leaving out for the sake of time, but Genesis really found an all-star cast to get their car out there. And I have to say they've created a really, really good car. The only failure, the only downside of this Genesis, in my honest opinion, is brand recognition. You'll still get people say, oh, it's just a Kia. Oh, it's just a Hyundai. And they're not wrong. But then again, if you write this car off, as just another Kia, you're missing something very, very special. This car is special to me. I really, really like it. It's one of the few cars that I got in and started driving and immediately felt right at home. It immediately felt comfortable. I drive five or six cars a week and that's hard to find these days, but this, I genuinely feel comfortable. I feel confident behind the wheel of, and I'm also enjoying its luxuries, heated seats and steering wheel. It's awesome sound system. It's nice ride quality and it's twin turbocharged V6 power. I really, really like this here Genesis. And I think this is a great start to a brand. And I hope the people at Genesis have more tricks up their sleeve because if this is the start, this is looking good. This is looking up. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Toyota of Naperville for letting me take out their used 2019 Genesis G70. I'm a big fan of this car and I'm a big fan of Toyota of Naperville. They have hundreds of used cars on the lot at all times. Absolutely awesome stuff. They're super, super helpful. And we've been working together on videos for the last two years now and it's been nothing but delight. So please go check them out. Their information is up on the screen as well as linked in the description below. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.